Hey everybody, welcome back to Super Geeked. I'm Victoria and I have a haul for you today of items that I have sourced to resell online on the various marketplaces that I sell on, such as Poshmark, eBay, Etsy, and Mercari. This is gonna be a big long haul. It's gonna be mixed. I have lots of women's clothing for you, which is one of my mainstays that I sell. It's all contemporary today. I don't believe I have any vintage pieces to share with you. But the cool thing is some of these I picked up in Washington DC when I was on vacation there. So some new to me brands that I've never found in my local area, that's exciting. Then I also have some shoes for you, both thrifted and retail arbitrage. I'll share those with you and a bunch of estate sale hard goods that I picked up to resell. So if you're interested in seeing what I'm picking up to resell online, then stick around and I'll show you what I got. So everything's gonna be marked in chapters below. So if you wanna skip around, you wanna go straight to hard goods and come back to clothing and shoes, then go for it. I encourage you to do it. Um, but they'll be easily marked below for you to be able to skip around. We're gonna start with clothes and we're gonna get into my first section, which is the stuff I picked up in Washington, DC. So just a couple things about shopping in DC. I live on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, right between New Orleans and the Florida Panhandle. And prices down here are pretty cheap. I think some of the cheapest in the US, especially in Mississippi. So DC, obviously things are gonna be a little bit more expensive, but I was really surprised that it wasn't too bad. Actually, I went thrifting in Virginia, technically. It's right over the river from the city center of Washington DC where all the memorials are and everything where we were staying. So here's a quick clip of us going into the Goodwill in Virginia uh, with my best friend, Amanda, who I flew up to see in Washington DC. Oh, you need a new mattress. Amanda, where are we? The Goodwill. Now from this thrift trip, they did have a colored tag. I signed up for their Goodwill point system. As you know, most Goodwills have their own little areas where they have a, their own mission. Uh, South Mississippi here has one. This specific Goodwill, which is the Greater DC Goodwills, they do offer a 75% off color every week. And a couple of the items I picked up were 75% off because of that my cost of goods came down to about $7 an item. So that's pretty good. I mean, that's cheaper than sometimes I've spent in New Orleans. So let me show you what I got. First brand I was so excited to find. I've never found this in my area. It is Corey Lynn Coulter. This is a cute jumpsuit. Check it out. It's got these florals. This actually was sold at Anthropology. Some of the Corey Lynn culture pieces can go for a lot more. This one uh, won't go for as much as some of the others, but it is beautiful. So I certainly could not leave this behind. Super pretty and hope to get about $85 for this item. Next up is a bread and butter brand for me, but I was super happy to find these. They are J. Crew. Bonus, they were new with tags. So they are these blue and white cropped wide leg linen pants. They do have this drawstring waist and the elastic waistband. So no brainer there. Next was another anthropology piece. It just says buy anthropology and it is this cute little linen romper. It is still hot outside. So linen is still a super good seller. It does have this built in tie waist. And most of the ones that I saw that are for sale online are in a blue color. I think this coral color is gonna give it a little bit of a bump on the resale market. So I grabbed this. Not a new brand, but a brand I love to pick up is Madewell. And this is just a really pretty midi length floral dress. It does have ruffles here at the sleeves. And here's the flower print up close. Really cute cotton dress, fully lined, and happy to find it. Okay, brand I've heard of but never found in my area. It is ATM. ATM stands for Anthony Thomas Malilo, I think is how you say the last name. And it is 
these houndstooth drawstring waist joggers crop length very cool i saw several of these were being sold on the real real so uh excited to find this brand because i've never found it before i could not leave this dress this is one of my favorite plus size brands to sell and actually wear too it is eloquy and this is a really pretty 70s inspired floral um, it actually says that on their website it has the faux wrap front and see if i can show you it has a tulip hem it's like a midi length with um, a lining underneath very cool print um, i liked that everything in my haul here from dc sort of had a theme so you can see sort of the colors i think it ends right here so there was sort of like a color theme here next up were i've been finding a lot of madewell lately but this was some more madewell these are the crinkled wide leg crop pants they do have like a ghosted polka dot and i just thought they were really cute we'll see how these do i was um cautious about picking these up okay so the brand is baldwin they were a designer jean company out of kansas city um a lot of celebs would wear baldwin but they are now defunct uh the designers went on to create another company i'm not sure what it is if i um think to remember i'll pop up the name of the new company but they are very high quality jeans they're in this beautiful wine color and i mean even their buttons say kansas city leather patch on the back and don't look like they were worn too much so i decided to go ahead and try them see how they're gonna do we'll see if it was a mistake uh also i did not have cell service in this thrift store so i couldn't look up comps so all the stuff you're seeing me show you i bought using my gut <laughs> because i just couldn't look them up so these shorts are adorable and i don't pick up tons of shorts because shorts don't have as high a return on my investment but they are made well and i've had good luck with made well shorts before they're in this adorable polka dot and what i really like is they have welt pockets on the back this like texturing sort of like a i mean you can feel it and then they have these cute um patch pockets on the front so excited to get these okay i didn't know what this was and like i said i couldn't look it up but i had a feeling about it so this is the brand it's called monopoly and it has a sweet peter pan collar it's just this adorable little dress it has the elastic panel in the center um, a hidden back zipper and it is a uh, fully lined i can't find any information on this brand it seems like it's a vintage brand you see it says made in korea there so there's a possibility that this is vintage um i'm not really sure if it's just a novelty dress i think i saw a couple other dresses being sold and that they were lab labeled as vintage um it's possible that it's maybe 80s vintage um but there are no material tags it feels like silk to me um, and it does have this adorable attached belt. So, um, and the puff sleeves, which are really on trend right now. So it was a no brainer for me. I wasn't going to leave it. It has bunnies and jewels on it. So no way I was going to leave it behind. So I did pick it up. And those special pieces, if it is vintage, are the ones that are going to make you the most money. Okay, I think the rest of the DC haul is all pants. I just looked out in the pants department because you know your girl went through dresses. I'm a big seller of dresses. These again are made well. I told you I've been picking up tons of made well. And they are some velvet cropped pants. I would not re recommend picking up velvet made well jeans, but pants seem to do really well so these loose fitting especially around the holidays people like to wear velvet i have sold plenty of these style pants in this brand it's prana they usually garner between 30 and 50 dollars and they sell super fast so they're just outdoors pants they have the tab pockets on the back with the prana logo these are the roll tab style so they are convertible they can be pants or they can be worn as like um bermuda shorts that sort of length okay a couple more pieces this is one of the pieces that was 75 percent off so i only paid like two dollars for these but it is 
Free People. And the reason why I got these, I, I usually pick up Free People jeans anyway. I mean, they still sell pretty good, about $30. But these are the pull-on style. And I have sold this exact style several times. They are in ultra high waist. They have this cool like detailing, very like 1980s, uh, early 90s. And so they're denim, but they're leggings and they're pull on. We like comfy jeans. Okay, a brand I've never picked up. It's called LTJ Denim. And I believe these are sold at Nordstrom, uh, but I, I love Olive. I don't necessarily wear it, but I just love the color. I'm drawn to it. So these are sort of like a take on a military style pant with uh, the big pockets in the back. They are cuffed at the bottom. And this reminds me of like army. I used to buy army pants all the time from the thrift store when I was in high school. But yeah, so I thought I'd try these out. It's cute. They have a little patch on the back that says with love and they're in excellent condition. Ooh, I was really excited about these. I don't always pick up this brand, but when I find a special piece, I'm going to pick it up. These are very 1940s inspired pants. Love this detailing. They are a satin with sort of these eye details three buttons, they're pull on, they have an elastic back, and the brand is Zara, and it's new with tags. So we love that. These are super cute, and not all Zara pieces are created equal. I just sold some Zara jeans the other day, you'll see in my upcoming What Soul video. So yeah, don't sleep on Zara, but look up the style. Okay, two more from DC, and then we're going to get into some local thrift stores. Uh, again, again, with me finding all this Madewell, and you'll see more Madewell later. If you find Madewell with this tag, which says it's fair trade certified, that means it is a newer Madewell style. These are the 10 inch high rise jeans in a black wash, and Madewell still sells consistently for me around $50. So I'm still picking them up. All right, last but not least, the second pair of pants I have from this brand to list, the last one I picked up uh, in that thread out buyout at my local liquidation store, but it is Babaton. And these pants sell for three or $400. They are a pull-on style dress pant, really a pretty cranberry color. They do have front pockets and an elastic in the back. So I haven't listed the other Babaton pants yet. They do sell these on the Real Real also. Um, so I'm interested to see how they do. All right, next I'm gonna share with you local thrift store finds of women's clothing that I bought to resell. So let's get into that. And the first one is a brand I've never sourced here. So I was excited to find it. It is Donna Morgan for BHLDN, which is Anthropologies. A wedding line. This is a bridesmaid dress. I will pop up a picture of it because it's going to be hard for me to show you the whole dress, but it's super pretty. Generally, when you pick up a bridesmaid dress as a second hand, expect to find at least one stain um, because the ladies are having some fun. There's one little spot here on the belt, but I think I can get it out and I won't have to soak the whole dress. I can soak just the belt um, and try to get it out. So I love selling dresses, period. They're a great return on investment because generally you pay under $10 at the thrift store for them and you can get 50 and above for them. Uh, bridesmaid dresses are exceptionally good because you have people not wanting to spend a couple hundred dollars on a dress, but might spend $75, $80 and you're gonna make a good return on your investment. Okay, so I don't ever get this brand. I have gotten it for free from donations before it is K Unger and it is an expensive brand. It's very much like a more mature dressy brand like Tadashi Shoji. So the reason why I got it is it is this cool, stacked paisley lace over a cobalt blue really pretty y'all and it is knee length this would be a great dress for a wedding it does have a v in the back it's in excellent condition and i also know that if i can't sell it for a good price uh, k unger sells really well on thread up and they mark it up pretty high so i would send it there as a second option if it doesn't sell on if i can't sell it on my own I forgot to mention another reason I picked up the K Hunger dress. It was half off. And this was also half off in the dresses. This is Cabbie. I don't pick up all Cabbie, 
but there's still a cabbie following and this is a knit sweater dress be perfect for leggings when it starts to get cold and a pair of boots it has this cute little ruching detail here on the sleeve super comfy feels like a blanket here is the back it has a dart in the back so that it is more comfortable to wear yeah so i think it'll do good okay not picking up this brand too much but i did like these uh, they were in good condition and it is can can they are a high rise skinny cropped black wash jean with some fraying at the hem and and then on the back of the hem it has that look where it looks like it's an unrolled cuff with the fraying there's the back of it so these were in excellent condition and the style is called the astillo so i thought they were cute all right so i went to my liquidation store hoping to find some good stuff to resell and they hadn't got any more thread up stuff in but i did find these shorts and they are new without tags the tags are missing i suspect because somebody wanted them but didn't want to pay the price that the liquidation store had them marked at they are not your daughter's jeans which sell you know pretty good i definitely think they're a brand that um you want to get some of the newer styles this is a super cute short again i don't pick up shorts too much but these were on sale there i think i paid seven dollars for them and they're cute i like the washing i like that it's uneven you have some dark here and some light almost like an acid wash would be so very cool and a great size eight so i grabbed those all right and then i went to the thrift store the other day and i found a few pieces first up is a pair of jeans it's pilcro in the letterpress my second favorite category to sell besides dresses is jeans again great return on investment this is the slim boyfriend this is a newer style and you know it's a newer style because it says pilcro in the letterpress by anthropology and has the cool again undone cuff detail with the fraying down here at the bottom the boyfriend style and the straight leg is really hot right now so um definitely grab these okay y'all here's another madewell <laughs> it's just like all madewell clothing so this is a cute i love this color it's like a purpley blue very pretty little dress it has this pretty detail at the waist that sort of looks like a belt almost like a corset type belt and has these buttons v front a little bit of ruffling here at the collar semi sheer sleeves with the ruffling here too and then on the back it hangs a little bit lower in the back but just a super pretty dress so i love a cute little madewell dress and then there's this moment <laughs> this is a good finale to this clothing side of the haul so this dress is beautiful first of all they had it marked at 15 dollars, but i knew i was going to get it i'm going to pop up a picture because it's going to be easier for me to show you because it is maxi length but it is this beautiful satin dusty pink color and this is asos it's new with tags and not a brand i pick up everything from but asos dresses the more formal dresses do super well it has this beautiful accordion pleat skirt it is sort of like a satin feel fully lined and it's got an open back with a cape and a deep v vintage inspired beautiful dress i guarantee you i can get close to 100 dollars for that dress so no brainer all right so next up let's get into shoes we're going to start with that liquidation company here in mississippi and i'm going to show you two pairs of shoes actually boots that i bought retail arbitrage i did pay 30 dollars for them but they both should sell for over a hundred dollars so super cute chelsea boots they're in a brown and black and they are by sorel so they are brand new with tags it doesn't have the price tag but it does have the sorel tag on it uh it does not have a box but these are all from that liquidation company they did a buyout of a major department store probably macy's um is who they usually get uh but could be somewhere else but um i did get these i thought they were really cute style and i looked them up and those are in a size seven by the way then i found these i thought those were super cool again sorel these are a wedge 
They're called the Joan of Arctic wedge boot. And here is the Sorel on the back. Again, new with tags, just without box. So I did pay $30 a pair for these, but knowing I'm gonna make over $100. I've been on a boot kick lately, so knowing that fall in quarter four is gonna be here before we know it. Um, these are some tall leather riding boots that I picked up at the thrift store. And the reason why I got them is they are a nice leather. I could tell they were a nice leather. They're soft um, and they're in good condition. This is the logo. If you can't tell, that is the Cole Haan Nike Air collaboration. So um, these were a line of Cole Haan that used Nike Air to create the, um, I believe the outsole and the insole of the shoe, uh, but the rest is by Cole Haan. So grab these boots. Okay, I lied. I do have one pair, one vintage item, and they are these wingtip shoes. They are Ferragamo. Now I don't pick up Ferragamo all the time anymore, but I really like the wingtip style. These were made in Italy, and actually, um, another reason I got them is because the size on these are nine double A, so they are narrow, which most Ferragamos are, but they're not super narrow. So, yeah, they're a cute shoe. Um, and then the only other thing is they were resold. So resoling is when you see on the leather bottom is covered with this, with rubber and they've replaced the rubber heel. So um, that can be a good and bad. The good thing is it has grips, whereas the leather wouldn't have had grips on the bottom. Um, the bad thing is that the shoe's been altered, but uh, these are vintage and, um, and I think that they'll do well. And last pair of shoes to share with you uh, was a new to me brand. This is called Viscata. And as you can see, it says Barcelona. So these were, made in Spain and actually you can see it on on the bottom of the shoe also it says made in Spain size 38 they are the super soft leather shoots I found out that this brand Viscata um Kate Middleton wears a lot of Viscata she wears the wedges um to give her a little bit of height um but these are all leather you can see that um just really cute like espadrille uh, raffia bottom there soft soft leather in this taupe color I thought they were pretty and the only flaw that they have is in the inside of this one is a little bit of staining so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and wet the leather and try to even that out so it doesn't look like bad but overall shoes are in great condition and the comps look good on this brand so I decided to get it all right, so now it's time for hard goods. You know your girl has been pushing hard goods uh, a lot and they've been selling really well for me. So I've been picking up a lot of hard goods lately. So I went to some estate sales and first thing I wanna show you are these fun tiki masks I got. So here is the first one. <laughs> and this one would be the comedy mask and they're all hand carved wood you can see on the back so um and you know it doesn't really matter the maker so much uh, sometimes these were made by artisans okay here is the match and this would be tragedy so he looks pretty sad but really cool pair i think they had these marked at 18 dollars a piece and i went on half off day at the estate sale so paid 18 for both of them and really love these really cool if i had place for a tiki bar i would keep them for myself but i'm gonna sell them very cool mid-century pieces okay at that estate sale i picked up some other pieces the first one is this piece it is milk glass and it is by fostoria so there's a look at it you can actually put this is called a condiment jar um, the reason I know it's Fostoria is the design of the lid here um, was a line from Fostoria. This is a condiment jar, so you could put like jellies or whatever in it. And then this little scalloped edge that has the cutouts, you can put little spoons in there and it'll act as spoon rest so people can use it to scoop out whatever the condiment is, um, jellies or what have you, from the jar. 
Then I got this really cool mid-century pitcher, and this is this is a lava finish the way that it is. It's got really cool colors on it. Um, you can see they had it priced at six dollars, but it, so I only paid three. It's made in Italy, so very neat piece. Was excited to pick this up. Glad it was left on the last day. And then I found this set. So this is a creamer and a sugar bowl and it is by Frank Oma and Frank Oma did this sort of like rustic uh, mid-century vibes the shape is like a sort of like a kidney bean and they had these kind of like southwestern feel of like a clay and uneven finish so I thought they were really cool so I picked these up and this estate sale company, who I know the guys really well, I've known them my whole life, um, they do have a garage sale part where everything is like a dollar or under. Um, so someone must have put this bowl back because it wasn't there at first. And it is Pyrex. So this is uh, the glass bowls. So they're clear glass and then they're painted a different color. You can see the clear glass on the bottom there. Um, but I think I paid a dollar for this Pyrex bowl and it does have one spot where the paint's coming off a little bit but um yeah for a dollar and then also at the garage sale I found these adorable little salt and pepper shakers they are acorns this one sits sideways and then this one sits upright there is the salt and pepper tops still have the cork bottoms just really cute little mini salt and pepper shakers I collect mid-century salt and pepper shakers and I know that a lot of other people do too so thought it was a good pickup for less than a dollar okay and the next estate sale we went to that same day I found another blue heaven plate so if you've seen me talk about this uh, this is one of the most collectible mid-century patterns I bought a bunch of other saucers so I will put this one with the rest of them this estate sale the stuff i'm going to show you the guy only char charged me i think 12 dollars for everything so this one i found in a bucket outside i thought the pattern was really cool it does have crazing on it but it's just a cute little mid-century dish i will probably just keep this um i don't know what the pattern is or who made it but i thought it was really pretty and i can use it for trinkets on my own the first thing I got was this beauty, which I'm gonna be adding to my collection. <laughs> and I do collect head vases. This one has a pretty pearl with the single pearl earring. Uh, one of the earrings is missing, but I can repair that, no problem. Here's the vase part, if you've never seen a head vase. These are very collectible mid-century items. Even with the missing earring, I could get over $50 for her but I'm gonna keep her for my collection. So, um, and then here is her marker on the bottom. This symbol with the red clover that says Japan is from the Yoko Booki. I think that's how you pronounce it, um, company and they made head vases, but isn't she pretty? So, so excited to add her to my collection. <sighs> and I so was gonna sell this, but I don't think I am. I love it. If you know me, you know I collect American pottery from the mid-century era, so the 1940s, 50s, 60s. It does not have any markings on the bottom, but as a collector, I know that this was a Royal Copley vase. She's pretty, isn't she? So I really want to keep her. Um, she would have had a sticker on the bottom. Not all American pottery is stamped California or American, but um, anyway, she's so pretty in this chartreuse green color that I just I just want to keep her so um, maybe I'll keep her for a little bit and then sell her I don't know okay and then last of the hard goods I'm going to share with you first up are these two pieces of china similar to Peter Rabbit is called bunnykins I actually collect bunnykins I have because they're from my childhood my mother used to buy them for me so I have a ton of Royal Dalton Bunnykins little figures that I break out around Easter time. I have several sets of the Bunnykins China with this bowl and this bowl and then also with uh, cup and saucer sets. My mother started collecting them uh, for my brother and I to eat with on special holidays instead of us using the 
grown-up china. This was our children's china by Royal Dalton. And so I do the same thing with my children. And if we have other children over for holidays, then they eat on the bunnykins. So I was excited to find these at the thrift store because they'll go in with ours. And I really debated on keeping these, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and sell them. Um, I did pay $4.99 a plate, but this was the first one that caught my eye. And it's so pretty. I love the colors and the little peacock there at the top. These are collector's plates by Vilroy and Bosch, a um, made in Henrik, Germany. These are limited edition plates that were sold in a set. They do have the hangers attached to them. Um, and I bought three of them. There were four. The fourth one did not match the theme. So these three are from French Fairy Tales. This is called The King of the Peacocks, Princess Radiant and the Phoenix. And the last one is called The Monkeys in the Garden. And so they were all French Fairy Tales, very beautifully done. And they were all limited edition. A single plate sells for about $20. So I'm gonna sell them as a set and hope to get a little bit more than that. Um, because I did invest $15 in them. But you know what? If they don't sell, I can keep them and not feel bad about it. <laughs> hey, I forgot to show y'all one other thing that I picked up to resell and it's a men's item. So I definitely wanna share it with you. Let me grab it. It's a tie. I hardly ever pick up ties, but I did pick up this one. I thought it was super pretty. And let me show you what brand it is. Burberry, we love Burberry. So I was happy to find this Burberry tie and picked it up to resell. Didn't want to leave it out my, uh, this long haul. Like you didn't already have enough stuff to watch. All right. <laughs> Bye y'all. All right, y'all. So that was today's haul of clothing, shoes, and hard goods that I picked up to resell on my online stores and in my closet on Poshmark, eBay, Etsy, and Mercari. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and enjoyed seeing what I'm picking up to resell. So I'll see you soon for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I will see you guys next time. Bye y'all.